the don'ts of visiting England. Guys, I actually think I would fit in perfectly in England. I mean, you guys drink alcohol a lot. And I'm that kind of guy. During the last FIFA World Cup, it was I saw in the news that they said um, that this was the first World Cup since what I think almost over a, almost half a century that the English fans were not, not no English fan was arrested and most people were speculating that it was because of the lack of alcohol in Qatar that was why that didn't happen. So from what I'm from what I've learned, I think you guys are alcohol drinkers. So I think I would fit in. But any other thing that could be happening in England, I don't really think I would have any issues if I ever visited or lived there in the future. If you are new here, help me out, hit that subscribe button, get me to 1,000 subscribers. I'm very, very close. I really appreciate it. Let's get right into it. Hey there fellow travelers, Mark here with Walter's World and today we are back in England for the things you don't want to do when you come to England. Now the first don't I have for you is don't worry if you don't understand the English. You may have spoken English or you thought you spoke um, this English guy doesn't sound since British. birth. You may think you're He's a an American, speaker, right? but don't be surprised if sometimes you might not understand people here in England because they do have various accents, but also some of the colloquialisms and sayings and phrases they do use here sometimes can throw you off thinking, oh wait, is he trying to be mean to me or is that a joke? I'm not sure. You know, and hmm. the humor here can be very different, so uh, don't worry if you don't understand the English. I wouldn't be concerned about the, the jokes. Um, I come from a country with, we have thick skin where I come from so a lot of things don't really offend me to be honest don't be scared of the food now don't expect to have a culinary masterpiece every day here but don't be scared to try the food I know a lot of people talk about England and it's kind of like mm, oh there's cool nice. sites in the countryside da 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 but the food oh my god Look, I've been coming to England for about 20 years now, wow. and I actually have seen the food getting better. There's tons of international food, there's tons of different restaurants throughout the country. But the thing is, the traditional English food can be pretty fun. If you go to a pub and you have, you know, your steak and kidney pie or your shepherd's pie, mm -hmm. or you go for a Sunday this, roast. I mean, this it, looks it's nice. Sunday tomorrow, and I'm kind of excited to hit the pub to have a Sunday roast with Yorkshire pudding. You'll be surprised that you might actually like the food here. So don't be scared about the food, okay? It can work out just fine. Now the third don't I have for you is don't just stay in hotels. One of the quintessential parts of coming to England and driving around England and going through England is to stay in the B&Bs, the bed and breakfasts, because they have a whole network of B&Bs throughout the country, oh, in big city, B &Bs. In, in small towns, in villages out in the countryside, and it really is a quintessential part of visiting England, because what's cool is you're staying with a family, and they're going to talk to you, they're going to give you the tourist information, they're going to give you the stories, the history, mm. you're in their home, and you see, wow, so this is how English people live this is how things are and it gives you this cool idea and that's one thing I really want to say is look you're not staying at Ibis all the time okay go stay in a oh. B&B so you can really get a feel this, of the place this is how the US really plug the best is. parts you're going to some of these smaller towns and stuff like that stay in the B&Bs sometimes your only option but it's I hate this kind of plugs though like is that how how US plugs are if I'm, I'm American yeah tell me that in the comments because I don't those two pin plugs are very annoying I don't like it Maybe, maybe it's because of how, um, maybe the, because of the kind of suckers that we have in my country. But those plugs, I hate it. The best option when you're here, and also to tie it in with the second thing about the food. Usually you get a full English breakfast with it, you know, with the with the you know, the, the black sausage, <laughs> the black sausage and the bangers, the normal sausage oh, and the beans and the toast and the, eggs nice and the fried tomatoes and mushrooms and all those things, and it just feels like a really special experience. Now the fourth th don't we have is don't be scared to drive. I know they drive on the left hand side of the road here, which can be a little confusing or off putting for travelers when they come here. But the thing is, public transport is really I wouldn't be able to drive yeah. here. Taking the you drive on the, the right country. side, right? Right. Oh my god, it is Terrible. expensive. So you're going to want to rent a car because you can get to all these little tiny villages and see the stately homes and you know that Downton Abbey stuff. I'd rather use see, a you trend. can go and see those things with your own car. So don't be afraid to rent a car here. However, I will warn you, when you first drive driving on the other side of the road, it is a bit, you know, off-putting. You're like, oh my, am I going the right way? And then when you hit your first roundabout, 
Good luck, my friends, good luck. But don't be scared to drive because you want to drive throughout this country. And if you are going to be driving, I do recommend getting the GPS for you because when you're driving the other side of the road, you're going to be so concentrated on that that sometimes you'll miss the turnoffs and stuff. And with all the roundabouts and everything, GPS, just a lot easier to deal with. I'll just tell you that one right now. Another thing that kind of deals with that other side of the road driving is don't forget to look right when you cross the street. Look, they're driving on the left side of the yeah, road. So that would be cars come from the right, not the left. And I can't tell you, I've been in York, I've been here in London. I've been I know like two guys that just moved to the UK. Like, I think I will ask them. I will ask them after I watch this video. Like, how do you guys manage like the adjustments? Just go in there and you have to start thinking differently in terms of how you cross the road and all that. That would be weird. Damn. Cambridge, Brighton, throughout all, most of the districts around this country, and tourists from everywhere in Europe and everywhere around in the U.S. They come walking in and they look left, and the car is coming this way, and it's like beep beep. Oh my God. And you have that almost death-defying or a death-inducing moment. So Crazy. don't forget to look right insane. when you cross the street. Remember, it's right, left, right, because the cars are coming from that way because they drive on the left hand here, left hand side. So please don't get killed. Okay, so <laughs> don't forget to look right. Now the sixth don't we have for you is don't think that London is England. London is a great city. It's an international city, but it's not all what England is. It's like saying I went to New York, so I saw America. No, it's not like that. Or I went to Berlin and i saw true germany no berlin i mean to be fair the united states is so large so i don't know how big i know that england as a country is not that big it's not a very big country and um london is kind of big so i think london will probably cover like maybe 20 percent 20 percent of the land mass of england I, i'm just coming up with that i've not checked it out uh, at all so maybe uh okay let me not say that it is the same kind of things but i'm compared to the you know, to the u.s like new york and the u.s is a bit different the u.s is so fucking massive so it's not it's not it's not even close new york london they're very cosmopolitan cities with people from all over and it's just such a cool melting pot that london isn't just england there's so much more to see out there so definitely get out and explore the countryside because i'm serious you go to york you'll fall in love you'll go to the beach by brighton or see the cliffs of dover or, mm -hmm. or, or manchester to, you know, united to, to cheshire and all the kinds of cool places you're gonna have a great time but realize that look England is not just London. Get out and explore this country. And kind of also going with that, remember, England is not Britain. They're two different kind of things. Britain makes up, you know, Scotland, Wales, England all together. So if you see people that are that are English, they're different than British overall. A Scotsman will be upset if you call them an Englishman, but will be <laughs> probably okay if you say they're British. All right. So just just know that one. Don't 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 mess up the British English with people around here. Okay. <laughs> now the seventh thing I want to say: don't forget uh... your P's and Q's. I.e., don't forget your politeness and knowing how to stand in the queue here because people in England are extremely polite sometimes to a fault like I feel like I've said sorry enough but I feel like I need to say sorry more and you'll get sorry if someone bumps into you and stuff they'll say sorry excuse me you need to do the same thing so when you come here make sure yes, you do my, my friend was telling me that that guys in men in England are so mild that's what he told me I don't know maybe he's wrong but they're so mild and so like what I use that is the word i don't know maybe i shouldn't use that word but that mild kind of so maybe that is part of what this guy is saying in terms of like them saying sorry and all that all the time but i think in my country <laughs> mentally sorry all the time uh, you're not going to see that <laughs> your manners that's why we all wish oh i wish my boys could grow up to be an english gentleman now mm. not everywhere are they english gentlemen i mean go to a pub late at night with beers going around you'll be yeah. like what? there's no english gentleman here <laughs> yeah there is that but in general manners are a very important thing here so make sure you don't forget your manners but mm. also don't cue jump i don't button line they do not like that here they are very much we have our line drink responsibly though but also, don't queue jump, i.e. don't button line. They do not like that here. They are very much, we have our line, you stay in your line, you do not mess with the line. So get to the end of the line. So <laughs> just know that one, because that's one thing I see the, the, get most of the tourists where people get upset is the line butting and stuff, because, you know, Germany, it's like a mad rush for a door or something like that. Here, we'll wait in line, it'll be fine. Let the people come out of the tube. That is we'll crazy. Tube. We'll that wouldn't happen in my country. We'll get in the train. <laughs> so you do have that. So don't forget your manners, okay? Your P's and Q's. 
don't forget those. And the eighth thing you don't want to forget when you come here is a raincoat. Now I've been here and I've been very lucky. This is my fourth day here and there's still no rain. So yes, it does happen that it doesn't rain here. It's not like it rains every day in England. Okay? But it's cold. But I will say, if you are going to come here, even in the summer, bring a light waterproof jacket. But more importantly, bring waterproof shoes because that's where you're really going to get wet because you can buy an umbrella for like five pounds, 10 pounds, no problem. So, but just don't forget that waterproof jacket because you will eventually need it okay i'm not gonna lie to you i've been very lucky this time but i've been coming here for 20 years and this is one of the this is probably the second time i've actually had like nice weather the whole time so it's awesome when you have it but it doesn't always happen and the ninth don't i have for you is don't forget to go to the pub this is definitely a pub culture place go and have your pint enjoy the talking the people all kinds of stuff and you will enjoy it so if I ever went to England, I would definitely do that. Though I would, I would stay in some corner and drink. I don't want to be fighting with anybody where there are bottles all around the place. So, but, uh, I would definitely go to a pub. I hope that helps you know what don't to do when you are here in England. Uh wow, guys, that was quite interesting. I mean, I think from what Oli has said in that video, I think I would fit in perfectly. I would fit in very perfectly. Uh, outside of the the roads like the driving and the crossing like that one is that one i'll probably take about two months until i get used to it that is crazy like in terms of like especially the crossing of the road because obviously i'm not going to be driving in a new country and just landing i'll start driving that is nonsense i wouldn't do that but like the crossing uh, that would that would take some time to get used to you know it is it is part of my psyche the way I cross in my country, you know, um, it's already part of my psyche. It's going to be take at least two months minimum for me to, you know, rearrange my psyche. <laughs> uh, but if, if, I, if I went to the United States, I won't have that issue. I think the US, the US drive on the left, right? Huh? Well, sorry, drive on the right. But you sit in the left in the car, then drive on the right. Yeah, just like my country. So. I wouldn't have that issue in the US, but in the UK, that would be a nightmare. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button on your way out to get this video out to more people. Thank you for watching. Love you guys. Take care.